We are joined now on the line by Congressman Fred Upton, Republican from Michigan, who is also the chairman of the House Energy and Commerce Committee and the author of a bill that has been submitted, uh, a, a piece of legislation that's been submitted, uh, the, the Keep Your Health Plan Act, H.R. 3350. Uh, so he actually wants to try to solve the problem that has been created by Obamacare. Congressman, thank you very much uh, for joining us. Before we get into the, what your bill says and what you're trying to accomplish here, I want to run a little soundbite from the president last night on NBC News in which he offered you know, what some people are characterizing as an apology. I am sorry that they uh, you know, are finding themselves in this situation based on assurances they got from me. Now, there were a lot of regrets, 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 and then finally he uttered that the words, I am sorry, about the situation that people find themselves in. Do you find that an acceptable apology? Well, it's not acceptable. Well, I'm glad that he said that he's sorry. Uh, but I tell you, it's not acceptable to the literally millions of people, hundreds of thousands uh, in Michigan and, are, and in the Midwest who are seeing their individual health policy canceled. And uh, that's one of the things, of course, that if, if anybody remembers what, what the president of health care does, if, if you keep your health care plan, if you like it, simply not true. And as I'm in West Michigan now and doing lots of different events this week, uh, uh, countless numbers of people are coming up to me telling me that, in fact, their, their insurance plan is canceled. Uh, they try to find an alternative that's going up perhaps as much as 400%. Deductible is going up in the thousands of dollars, and it is not a happy situation back home. Well, but hold on a minute. The president also said in this interview on NBC last night that the majority of people who got cancellation notices will be better off. Uh, they will they will get uh, a, a better insurance, and it won't be more expensive. So is he lying again? Well, well let the individual decide whether they're going to be better or not, uh, off or not. I mean, they're the ones that are actually write the check for that for that plan and if they don't want the mandates uh, if they want to keep the plan uh, we've seen a nightmare certainly with the signups on the website i think they're still down earlier this week I have no clue how they're going to get this thing up and running really by the end of october uh they were expected to you know to, to get their seven million target of enrollees they're going to have to do about two hundred fifty thousand people a week and i think in the first couple of weeks I, I would bet that they didn't even get fifteen thousand people so it's it's uh, off to a very rocky start. What our bill does, and it'll be on the floor a week from today, it says simply this. If you had an individual health care policy uh, effective as of January of this year, that counts. That counts as uh, part of the grandfather clause for the next year. So it's uh, people can keep what they want. Obviously, if they want something else, they can always cancel it and find something else. Who knows what it'll be, but... At least they have the peace of mind that if they had something that they like, they can keep it rather than going through this rat race of trying to figure out something else for their, their health care of their family. Which, by the way, Congressman Fred Upton from Michigan, that's what most people thought they could do because the president kept promising that as he was selling Obamacare to them. But, but it sounds to me like that's a bit of a Band-Aid, and I understand you only control one half of one-third of the government, so Band-Aids is pretty much all the House of Representatives can do right now, but... Listen, you're a good congressman. You want to help the people of Michigan. You're a Midwesterner. Uh, I get it. But what do you say to the people here in Washington who say, you Republicans, you're crazy. You shouldn't be proposing anything. This thing is a mess. It's the Democrats' mess. You should just stand back and let it suffer, let it die, let it be a horrible mess, because then you will win more seats in the 2014 elections. Well, you know what? This is this is a life and death for lots of people. We saw the story earlier this week in the Wall Street Journal of the uh, the person who had gallbladder surgery wants to keep their doctor. I mean, we're, we're seeing lots of stories like that. We don't want to get into a – we really don't want to get into a political game. Let's, look, it's the law. Even Ted Cruz said the president uh, – until the president changes, it's not going to get repealed. But let's at least do this, something that, that gives some peace of mind to people who otherwise are having their, their policy canceled, and say, look, this was – at least what the president said it was going to do. Let's force him to keep his promise. Now, I introduced this bill only about a week and a half ago. We already have a, nearly 150 co-sponsors. It'll be on the floor a week from today. My guess is that we'll be getting 
pushing close to 300 votes. So you can't do that without a lot of Democratic vote as well. well. I mean, I, yeah, look, I just, I just want to sort of go back to the point that Larry was making. Ultimately, if you want to change the law, you've got to have more votes, especially in the United States Senate. And and I think that what people are coming to the realization is this is just bad legislation. I mean, we, we've got a, a website that doesn't work. We've got people who are losing their health care uh, through no fault of their own. And, and, and when they finally do, you know, change over, they're going to find out that the health care that they can get is going to be more expensive. Isn't it a good argument to say, leave it alone, let it just, you know, sort of fall apart under its own weight, and then when people are outraged and do something about it by going to the ballot box, then you can really change the law? Well, Brian, we tried to repeal it. <laughs> yeah, I know you're trying to well, make, I, I, make yeah, that argument. It, but that was before people really knew what it was. Well, some of us did know that it was going to be a disaster. We talked about it, I mean, uh, for the last number of months. Uh, but not until did people, you know, millions of people start getting these cancellation notices in the mail the last couple of weeks did the rest of the country really start listening to, to what was going to happen to them. So, uh, but in the meantime, let's at least say, look, if you had a health care policy that you liked, it was an individual policy, it's okay for the year. Now, we we got to move this. One of the reasons why we're moving it quickly is we want the insurance companies to keep providing that policy. And the closer you get to the end of the year, the less likely that's going to happen. So we're working with the Senate. I've talked to a number of senators as well. Uh, and I think that if we can get a big vote this next week, that will put a lot of pressure on the Senate to come along and, and do something very similar, if not identical to what we're doing now. Uh, uh, Congressman Fred Upton, really fast before we let you go, uh, Carl Levin, your senator, has announced his retirement. The seat is open there for the state of Michigan. I've heard some people mention you as a very popular man who uh, has won so many elections in that state in your district. You, you're not on the record as to whether you want to run for that seat. Uh, you want to go on the record today? Well, my wife is listening as we talk, and the answer is no. I'm very happy with the job that I happy with my day job, the six counties that I represent. Uh, chairman of the Energy and Commerce Committee. I'm running for re-election to the House and not thinking about the Senate. I took okay. myself out early. But but if, but if your Senate wife race. wasn't in the car, would your answer be different? If, if, say it again, if your wife wasn't in the car, would your answer be no, different? Right. No, it would be different. <laughs> All right, just checking. <laughs> Congressman Upton, thanks a lot. Hey, Have listen, a good weekend. Listen, right. I really appreciate you, you, you calling in and being with us today while you're out on the road there in Michigan.